Yes, it's Metrophile, your social diary program coming to you on your award-winning station, Channels Television. We have all it takes to spice up your weekend on this edition of the program. So relax and let's enjoy it together. I'm Ugechiku Wasi. Omolara Odumosum and Alexander Adegboyega Adegbenru begin a new chapter in their lives as man and wife. Mrs. Oyinkon Adu, the wife of the chairman CEO of DBN Television, is 50 and she sure rode out the drums to celebrate. A very Reverend Monsignor Bernard Okodua celebrates 40 years of being a priest of the Roman Catholic Church. Professor Pat Utomi's Center of Value in Leadership honors some outstanding young Nigerians. <laughs> young and charming Adebuega Adebenru met beautiful Omolara Odimosu overseas years ago. And today they are telling a different story as their friendship has led them to the altar. The Odumosu and Adegbenro families look forward to this day as their lovely children Adegoiga and Omolara come together in holy matrimony. This colorful congregation made up of the family and friends as well as well-wishers came to support the newlyweds. The first lady of Lagos, Dame Abimbola Fashola, is among the personalities that came to rejoice with the families. The husband and wife now move to sign the dotted lines. And with that, it's settled. They're now Mr. and Mrs. Adigwiri. They should love themselves, they should pray, they should communicate, and they should commit everything into the hands of the Lord. They stay in love and they trust each other because that is also very important. And they be each other's friends. There is no third party between myself and my wife. We report ourselves to each other. And I, I guess if they do that, then everything is going to be all right. Patient, tolerance, believe in themselves, talk to themselves, and God will see them through. My prayer to them is that God will grant their union with beautiful children, children that will, you know, they will be happy with and they will make them happy, make all of us proud in Jesus' name. The reception started immediately at Times Square Entertainment and Events Center, where the guests were all seated, waiting for the social part of the event to kick off. It started with the bride's family dancing in joy. And 
Vanessa Turner, the groom's family. And lastly, the newlyweds enter in grand style. This cake, strategically positioned, is waiting to be cut, and the couple did just that. Young and vibrant couple, so full of life, and they really look cool together. Okay, more celebrations. This time we present to you an ageless beauty, Mrs. Oyinko Adu, who clocked 50 in a grand style. The celebrant, Mrs. Oyinko Adu, arrives Jade's place, venue for her 50th birthday anniversary. This indeed is a special day in her life as she started it with praise and thanksgiving to God. And whatever we have comes from God. It is His name and His holy name that we have to consecrate and praise. And thanks to God. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us to this place. Father, things of joy will be a portion in the name of Jesus. Her husband, the chairman, CEO of DBN Television, Mr. Sonia Adu, as well as other important dignitaries like former presidential aspirant Professor Pat Otomi and wife were also in attendance. Oyinko as a person, you know, I have known for years and she's such a wonderful person, you know, very warm and very committed to friendship. In some strange way, we've been part of each other's house stories. I remember when Oyinko met Rosa. I remember Rosa taking us to lunch when he was just in house. The celebrant with her husband and son cut her birthday cake. Thank you. 
It's only the Lord that knows how much I thank Him every day, every morning, for each new day, every morning I see. I thank Him because when I look back, He has really been good to me. Oh, God, my wife is my darling. She's a virtuous woman. She is quite humble and very, very lovely. It was indeed a day of joy for the celebrants who really showed it off, dancing with family and guests. Now, very Reverend Monsignor Bernard Okodua has spent 40 years working in the vineyard of the Lord as a priest in the Roman Catholic Church, and that is no mean feat, so he called for a celebration. Now, Monsignor Okodua, who hails from Irua in Essa Central Edo State, started his journey to priesthood in 1971. Today, he can only but thank God for his mercies and grace upon his life. He marked the day with a special Thanksgiving service and reception with all the priests, reverend sisters, friends, and well wishes at the regional Mundi Catholic Church, Mushi, Lagos State. <laughs> The song ushers in the mass service and the priest, all walking before the celebrant, the very Reverend Monsignor Bernard Okodua. It's the service to mark his 40th priestly ordination held at the Regina Mundi Catholic Church, Mushin, Lagos. This day is indeed significant for the Monsignor as other clergymen, reverend sisters, as well as a large congregation came to celebrate this milestone in the life of Monsignor Okodua. Born on October the 20th, 1943 in Irua, Edo State, Mosino Kodua started his journey to priesthood at St. Teresa Minor Seminary, Okeare Badon, 1959. While he finished his secondary education, he proceeded to SS Peter and Paul Major Seminary, Bodijai Badon. He completed his priestly training in 1971. He was a Dane priest on December 26, 1971 at SS Peter and Paul Catholic Church Abelkuta in Ogun State by late Archbishop John Kwa Amuze Age. He has served in so many Catholic churches, mostly in the southwestern part of Nigeria, and presently is at St. Anthony Catholic Church, Baja, Lagos. Mm -hmm. 
Monsignor Kodua can be described as a true priest of the Catholic faith and an ardent promoter of the Catholic doctrine. His kindness, humility and commitment to the work of God, many say, stands him out and that explains the large turnout of people who've come to celebrate with him. This was followed by the consecration. After that, Thanksgiving is next as the celebrants is joined by other members of the congregation. The events did not end without a word of appreciation from the celebrant. It's a time to give thanks to all those who for the past 40 years have done it with me in this Christian life. I want to thank my Archbishop, the late Archbishop John Paul Abusu Age who agreed to ordain me a priest in 1971. And that was how the service came to an end. is that the good Lord will continue to grant him good health and long life so that he will continue to be useful in the vineyard of God. We want to wish him all the best, many more happy years in the Lord's vineyard and the grace of final perseverance. We are so happy and so impressed. It's not easy to be a Monsignor in the Catholic Church. It's not easy to undergo 40 years priesthood. So we thank Almighty God for his today. The reception took place at the church premises. Music filled the air as the celebrant made his way to the high table.
presence of all these distinguished guests, the celebrant cut his 40th priestly anniversary cake. A toast to the priest, and that was conducted by Sir Steve Omojafo. And after that, the floor was open. For 40 years as a Roman Catholic priest, that is such a long time, and we say a big congratulations to him. Now, some young and vibrant Nigerians were honored recently in Lagos by Professor Patutomi's foundation, the Center for Value in Leadership as Leadership Ambassadors. Now, this honor is as a result of their positive impact on the society. The need to encourage the younger generations, especially those who have made tremendous impacts in society, is the focus at this special evening organized by the Center of Value in Leadership, a foundation set up by former presidential aspirant Professor Pat Utomi to reward excellence amongst the youth. The event, which took place in Lagos, was well attended by youth and other important dignitaries. Professor Pastor Tomi left no one in doubt that he was indeed happy with some of the outstanding youth who have dedicated themselves to the deans of hard work and also have made true examples to others, especially the younger generation, and assured that by placing these badges on them, confirming them leadership ambassadors. Several years ago, we got together with a group of new leaders, and in the years since that, they have had tremendous impact in society and we want to appreciate them. We're just going to invite a couple of them out and, you know, introduce them. And it's only normal for some of the awardees to respond to this gesture. Because most times, leaders usually think that what we need is money. Most of the time, what we need is a platform, an opportunity to be encouraged, an opportunity sometimes to just share our dreams with you, and so you can guide us. And I think that you owe us that responsibility if Nigeria would not just be the giant of Africa by name, because we cannot be the giant of Africa where there's a fundamental disconnect between the leadership and the people. We will be the giant of Africa by the quality of people, the quality of values, the quality of services, and the quality of a country that we show to the international community. Thank you very much. At the center of what I do is giving opportunity to every young person 
who will not, you know, who will then be saved the embarrassment of being told that they can't that cannot use computers. And that's and that's what I do today. I'll end with the story of famous. Famous went for his internship at the UK Deputy High Commission, uh, just you know, here in Victoria Island, and then there was a job opportunity at the UK High Commission in Abuja. Now I personally advised him not to apply. Because I knew, I mean, how on earth, without a university degree, do you apply for a job in a diplomatic mission and expect to get it? But famous will not listen to you because we have taught him that anything is possible and he believed it. Famous applied. Guess what? He was invited for the interview. Well, to cut a long story short, he got a job. But that was not what excited him the most. What excited him the most was that they sent a car with that red plate number that said CD to come pick him up in his house in Ajegule took him to the airport, he got on an airplane for the first time. And when he said this, I could understand the feeling. Because on November 16, 2001, when that airplane took off from MMIA in Lagos, I going to Johannesburg, I didn't care what was going to happen. All I cared about was, oh my God, I got on an airplane. I wasn't looking at one in the sky and singing, crossing my leg, and I'm playing it. You won't know the song, so I won't bother singing it. But that was what happened. Famous got the job, but this is why we do what we do. Because when one person like that gets an opportunity, it gives the entire community. It ended with an advice to the Nigerian youth to exhibit clear sense of value in everything they do and impact positively on the society. Well, that is a challenge thrown to the youth of this country to contribute positively in their own little way in the development of our country. Okay, it's on that very inspiring note I wrap up Metrofile this week, but you can reach us on Metrofile at channelstv.com and on Twitter at Ogechuku Osei. Well, that will be all for now. Till I come your way again, I'm Ogechuku Osei. Bye-bye. <laughs>